Brian comes in peace Lives by the river's edge And reminisces about the 70s He sings, it's out of tune Brian's a little rough But hey, that's what I'm used to Here today Hate to say it, but I know what tomorrow brings. Farewell to the misses of my own town. Songs and eccentrics I adore. I'll be sad when you're gone, cause you won't hear those stupid hard rock songs blasting on your Brian wears red, gold, and green It's all peace and love But he gives the girls the creeps A red head in a reggae band A one drop beat With a mic in his hand And he's singing And he's singing A mighty swan song the buzzing of the tractor beam. Uh, Brian floats up, suspended in the air. He's off to a place where I don't know, but after all, who's left to care? Farewell to the misfits of my own town, to the trunks and eccentrics I adore. I'll be Baptized in the flames 
didn't realize but that that boy was in pain looking back I can see it in his eyes the fix on a future feel being left
your fingertips are cold And the nails on the back porch Small to many goes And I watch the seas Watch you get a road hard And put away the way that Ross garage That Ross garage Glory days I'll never forget In the heat of the night Body's starting to sweat And the echoes of laughter Off the concrete floor Start ground is on the radio CFRU is live today from our vinyl library and from the Honor Studio, and you've been listening to the Boo Radley Project. And we're going to chat with them a little bit. Hi, Boo Radley Project. How's it going? Hi. Hey. They're like, this is the best um, day of our lives. We've been looking forward to this since since day one. How how was that? Good. <laughs> Excellent. Good. good time. <laughs> Just to put it in one word. Good. good. That's good. great. Well, that's better than not good. Um, have you ever played in a space this small before? What was that like? Uh, yeah, I think we have played in. <laughs> we've played in uh, very tiny places. Um, uh, this being one of them, but uh, <laughs> definitely not the, definitely not the smallest space, and probably not the smallest really? we'll ever play. But uh, definitely, yeah, one of them. One do of you the do you aim to make the pl- place that you perform smaller and smaller each time? Yeah, challenging yeah, yourselves. Yeah, we actually uh, tour exclusively based on venues where it's like the <laughs> stage is smaller each time. We actually dreamt of doing a sewer show. <laughs> a sewer show. Wow. Well, I'm looking forward to that one. The acoustics will be uh, certainly um, something to talk about. I'm sure. Mm. Um, c- 
could I get you all to introduce yourselves uh, a little bit? I know that we are being very big and brave right now and sharing some microphones. Um, so just do your best or maybe speak loudly. <laughs> all right, I'll start. Uh, I'm Raphael. Um, I'm the trumpet player. And <laughs> uh, my name is Scott. I am the bass player. Uh, my name's Emmett. I'm guitar and vocals. My name is Leon. I am the violin and piano player. Oh, ho, ho. My name is Haley, the drummer. <laughs> My name's Hayden, and I do percussion. Amazing. I noticed that, yeah, I noticed that you guys have quite a collection of, quite an amalgamation of instruments with you, it seems like. Um, there's a harmonica at some point. That was really exciting. Wasn't expecting that. It's like, uh, uh, I don't know, like biting into a donut and finding out it's cream-filled or something, and that's, uh, you know, you got harmonica on it. Do you, does it, is it difficult? Well, I mean, the answer is yes, but like... <laughs> like how do you make traveling with so many instruments <laughs> work and how do you decide uh like what to bring well luckily a lot of uh the multiple instruments that we end up playing well myself anyway uh, they're small instruments uh harmonica trumpet not too hard to carry around mm -hmm. the piano the piano and the guitars <laughs> are a little a little harder uh the cajon as well percussions it's bigger but uh we make it work it does help that uh <laughs> sorry it does help that we do have a big old convoy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we got two matching uh Dodge caravans and uh -huh. Yeah, our main rule when we're taking gigs is we need to make sure we lose money on the gas we spent to get there. <laughs> and then but you make up for it by playing in like really really small venues. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's a floor space. It's efficient. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There you go. That's a uh, profit and uh profit and in expenditures. Um I have a bit of an icebreaker even though we've already kind of like gotten into this but um i was chatting um with matt the other day who um is also a volunteer um here and he can't be here today unfortunately um and he asked me uh how many gnomes i thought that i could take in a fight and while i do respect that question i think it'd be way more interesting to talk about how many geese you think you could take a fight uh, taking a fight especially because um this is a canadian band and we're in uh, we're in canada right now um so uh, how many geese? You have no weapons. Um, you can be clothed. Um, and yeah. Are we talking one on one or as a <laughs> band? How many we? Can oh, have? that's a great <laughs> question. You know, I was gonna say one on one, but I would love to know how many geese the Boo Radley Project thinks that they could take on in a fight. Realistically, uh, this is Scott talking. I'm thinking <laughs> maybe twelve total. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> no, I, two for each person, of you. Yeah. I don't we think they can outnumber like a, us. We would form like a, 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 like a circle and they and kick. But <laughs> we would you like link arms, like, link <laughs> arms and form a circle and like but then spin we around? We can't protect our heads if we link arms. They'll, they'll go oh. aerial and we'll be in a lot of trouble. Yeah, the fact that they can fly adds like a whole a new element to like the whole fight. And I just want to condone. We uh, say we don't <laughs> condone animal cruelty, but this is purely a hypothetical. But if it was self-defense, like <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. I think I could probably, personally, I think I could probably do four, like oh. just me. <laughs> Why you wow. ask? Well, I don't know. I don't know, like how appropriate this is for radio, but I think I would grab two geese by their necks, and then use them like nunchucks. <laughs> I hope you aren't planning to run for politics. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Like <laughs> uh, yeah, I should probably um, redact that statement. My views don't reflect any of the views of my employer. Um, yeah. I also saw... Oh, Kit. Um, yes, I also... I was looking at your YouTube as well. Um, and you played at Gus's Pub a couple years ago. And do you know that that's, in fact, my family's uh, restaurant? Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> Oh, and they're clapping. They're clapping for me. Okay, is the Party Mix Bowl back? Because I know <laughs> that the pandemic, it went away, the Party Mix Bowl. And it's also one of the only places you can play where you can watch people actually gamble like mm -hmm. in the middle of the performance. Uh, we love that venue. Two of us went to school in Halifax, so yeah. we love Gus's Pub. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I, I find it so funny. It was like, I, I don't know, I didn't, I didn't grow up in Canada, and so like I was pretty like far removed from that part of my family, but in fact... I am related to the people who own Gus's Pub, and I have lots of family in Halifax because my uh, family did what every Greek person, uh, what every like, uh, Greek family does when they move to a new English-speaking country, which is they move there and they start a restaurant. Um, so anyways, I thought that was interesting, and uh, that's cool that you played there. And uh, anyways, my dad's cousin runs it, so. <laughs> and now you're here, and now I'm interviewing you, and like, I don't know, I think that's clapping, we're clapping, yay. <laughs> um, 
I also wanted to I don't really know why this came to, it might have been because I, I have to be real I did have counseling like immediately before this <laughs> so maybe I'm feeling a little bit sentimental I'm also about to graduate from my undergrad um, I took my last midterm of my undergraduate degree on Wednesday um, and I'm here interviewing oh more clapping. more clapping more clapping for me wow um and I, I wanted you. I wanted to ask you what you all wanted to be when you grew up, or maybe if you don't feel that you are grown up, <laughs> what do you want to be when you grow up? Let's ask a rocker daily, daily mon. Yeah. I want to rock. <laughs> <laughs> that's what you want to be when you grow up. No, that's what I want to do. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I, I want to be, uh, I guess, a rock star. <laughs> okay, that makes sense. <laughs> I hope I talk for all of us here when I say we're probably accomplishing somewhat a little bit of what we were attempting to do growing up, you know, being musician on the road and all that. It's uh, a little bit of the dream, and we're doing it, and uh, it's always a, it's always a good time to uh, to see the the the, fi- the, com- the feedback from from uh, from the people, especially when we get to play on amazing radio shows like this. When I was in JK, my dream was to be a cop, and I've revised that <laughs> opinion. <laughs> Anybody else want to go? <laughs> um, I'm just going to redact mine and say I actually wanted to be a scientist. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, before I really understood how the world worked, I wanted to be a, like, door-to-door, like, soda sales. <laughs> <laughs> Any specific kind of soda or just, like, whatever you could get your hands Any on? Any soda. I loved soda as a kid. So, you know, I'm you still a big Diet Coke stan. So, uh, Is Diet you know, Coke your number one? Diet Coke's my number one. Okay. We're not sponsored by him, but we're hoping to one day. <laughs> Is that is that Boo, the Boo Radley Project's ultimate goal <laughs> is to be sponsored by Diet Coke specifically? <laughs> yeah, I'm seeing some head nods. So yeah, okay. I want an endorsement from Moon Gels. Like I've always <laughs> wanted that. Uh, from what? Moon Gels. They're like the little blue things you stick on your drums to dampen them. <coughs> oh, I yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. I don't know. <laughs> Very niche. Yeah. Very niche Moon Gels. I was like, this is some kind of gum or something. Anyways. I um, want an endorsement from U-Haul so we can pull all of scott's cases of diet coke so you can put all your yeah so you can put your harmonica in there and <laughs> yeah. the trumpet and yeah that's fair i mean i think that that would be useful um i feel like part of the reason why that question resonates with me especially now um is like i said i'm graduating soon and um i just got this job at the radio station and i feel like i kind of stumbled upon it and it's actually been so oh, guys guys please please <laughs> um and it's been so cool to have bands like the Boo Radley Project and and just be exposed to music in this way. And I took a really big step back from performing and music and like public speaking and like somehow it kind of found its way back to me, I think, as those kinds of things do. Um, And I was wondering if you have experienced anything along the lines of that as far as like having to take a step back from music or like what your relationship with music has looked like over the past 12, 13 years being a part of this band and with these other musicians and playing like seven instruments in a show? It's been great. I love these guys, every single one of them. I just want to tell you guys that. And <laughs> yeah, now's the time. Let it out. <laughs> and um, it's just been great, like, having this thing to do that's always really, like, meaningful and fun. And doing it like every other week nowadays. I mean, it, we used to do it more, didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it's gone through many phases. We used to all wear costumes. Like we started oh. in like hi- high school, and we would wear costumes every time we played. Now we more have inflatable uh, like monsters and stuff. <laughs> and like me and Hayden love setting up inflatable monsters. He doesn't let me set them up all the time, but I like to set them up sometimes. So is that like is that like another hobby that you get to like enjoy in like through being a performer or like your side hobby of like setting up inflatables? Well, just decorating <laughs> the stage. Okay, and that's the fair. <laughs> <laughs> you just leaving inflatables like scattered around town because you just can't stop yourself from setting them up is what I'm picturing. Rogue decorating. Yeah, rogue decorating. Yeah. I mean, that's way funnier to me, I think, than it is to anybody else. But anyways, continue, please. Yeah, I could pick up from there and say that uh, definitely over the pandemic, we, we did have to uh, slow down a little bit. Touring stopped. Um, as any other band did, we, uh, we kind of had to slow down our things. But uh, we tried to keep the momentum going. 
Uh, it took us a while to get back at playing as many shows as we do now, but uh, we're finally fully back. And uh, during during that time of uh, reflection, we, we all ended up doing our own thing. I mean, uh, on the side, we all have full-time jobs also that are not necessarily music-related. Uh, I don't. <laughs> Unemployed, they say. D- Daily is an exception, but uh, <laughs> yes, we, stuff, we, we, you know, as, uh, as it is, uh, we all have to work on the side and do this as well and mm-hmm. uh you know it's uh we, we all have our own careers on the side so yeah we, we did have to step back eventually and figure it out careers in soda sales and uh yeah, that's yeah. right yeah i think one of the interesting things about starting a band in high school is when we were in high school um it was easy to feel super productive because your biggest responsibility in life is like track practice so <laughs> <laughs> you can just like spend the other six hours of the day playing music with your friends and then um when you get older, obviously, you have a lot more responsibilities, and it doesn't make it any worse. Like, you still feel productive, but you kind of value the time more because it feels a bit more exceptional when you can actually get together with people and write new music or play music together. Mm-hmm. Yay, more clapping. Yay. <laughs> um, yeah, because you, you guys, have, you've been together since you were in high school, right? Yeah, that's, that's like, that's longer than some bands stick around. <laughs> um, how did you meet then? How did you all come together? <laughs> uh, well, Scott and I, uh, well, we didn't really meet there, but we met in grade nine. Well, we did meet in grade nine, but in a media <laughs> arts class. This was like devised in a media arts class in grade 11. Shout out to uh, Heather, Mrs. Heather McDonald, uh, who was our media arts teacher. And we saw that there was going to be a battle of the bands. Um, and uh, we decided to uh, go for it, even though we didn't really know how to play music. <laughs> uh, so that's where we met. Oh, all, all, all oh. six, six of you. <laughs> the name kind of came before the band. <laughs> really? Oh yeah. Okay. So here's the thing. I try my best also, not to ask really lowball questions like, and what inspires you, and like, what does your name mean. However, I would like to know why you are called the Boo Radley Project. Hayden didn't like the idea of Sting with two eyes. He thought we'd get sued. (laughs) (laughs) So um, we figured, you know, everyone that we know at least uh, had to read To Kill a Mockingbird in high school. And Boo Radley was kind of uh, a reclusive good guy that uh, we think had some mystery to him. And Mm -hmm. a lot of people could probably relate to that you know, um, not being in the spotlight, but, you know, always trying your best and being misunderstood sometimes. So, you know, we're, uh, we're a band that we, we're just a bunch of good guys, uh, <laughs> sometimes a little misunderstood, <laughs> but, you know, we're, uh, we're out here for, for the people. Just like Boo Radley. Just like Boo Radley. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <Yes. for> <laughs> <laughs> because I was, um, I was talking to somebody else who worked at the station was asking me who was coming in this Friday. And I was like, oh, the Boo Radley project. And she was like, what? And we were like trying to remember who Boo Radley was. <laughs> and like, I went down this like wormhole and I, it was like, we were like, who's Boo Radley? And we looked up like the man who played him in like, s- <laughs> like some movie rendition. Anyways. Bobby Duvall. Yeah, uh, maybe. I don't remember, honestly. Um, but I was like, wow, there is a lot of mystery. So much mystery, in fact, that I broke my own rule of asking uh, what the name of your <laughs> the name of your band means. So Sting with Two Eyes uh, was out. <laughs> Boo Radley is in. And did you did you also read that book? Uh, yeah. Please yeah. say no. Oh, okay. It would have yeah. been way funnier if you had said we, no. We had, to, we, we had to read it in grade 10 English at the school we went to, but at the point we started the band, Emmett and I had yet to go through grade 10 English, so it was like two months after we started the band, we read the book, we're like, oh, that's what our band name's about. <laughs> do you ever get, like... Do you ever get like a kind of imposter syndrome from that? Because to me, like kind of what it sounds like, the origins of this band were not super serious it was just kind of like a bunch of like teenagers go ahead Emmett yeah okay I I would say we're not even super serious right now (laughs) I don't think we've ever been super serious I mean we we love what we do but um you know the uh I think that fundamentally that we're just kind of a we like to have fun and you know Mm. joke around and and I think that's uh been true all the way through our our, uh, playing career okay yeah that's interesting. Well, I mean, you've been, well, I just, I think it's funny because, okay, you say you're not like taking it seriously, but you've like toured and like been together Sorry. for like. <laughs> I, I think there's a nuance between like taking it seriously and being serious. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, Hold on, hold on. Should we plug the boo spiel? <laughs> See, this is daily being very business serious right now. 
<laughs> we're f- we have we're holding a curling tournament tomorrow God. in Alora, <laughs> with like a rock show at the end of it. That's us, and then like at after that, there's like the after party of um. There's gonna be like a DJ playing, and there's <laughs> free food and get in for twenty bucks or <laughs> two twenty bucks if you want to start a team and compete. <laughs> We're looking for one more team, so if you're out there, somebody who curls, just like, please, we need you. Um. Okay, back up. <laughs> okay, I need to. I need you to hit the brakes on this vehicle. What is the difference between taking something seriously and being serious? We'll get back to curling in a second. I need to like. I need to. I need to understand this first. Well, we can. Uh, we can get out there and do what a serious band does. Meanwhile, have a lot of fun doing it, and as you can see, uh, some s- some some green shirts were worn t- uh, today. So that's the kind of lack of <laughs> seriousness we like to uh, t- to to have. <laughs> oh yeah! By the way, the studio is a, it's, a, it's a green screen, and everybody's wearing a green shirt. <laughs> so you can imagine what that looks like on the feed. We were it's we're kind of on a two game two-day pregame plan for St. Patty's Day. Oh. So we were at a pancake kegger at the KFC in the UC basement just before this, and then we <laughs> didn't have time to change. That's fair. I, you know, it happens to the best of us. So, I mean, so I mean, is it is it right of me to say then, I mean, there, there must have been a point where, like, in some capacity that you started, I don't know how to word this without you telling me I'm wrong. Um, like, there must have been a point where, like, something about the Boo Radley project became more serious and I'm just kind of wondering when or what that point was or if there was a catalyst for that because like I'm picturing you as like little 14 year olds in ninth grade being like we're gonna play Battle of the Vans and like right, thanks Heather uh, McDonald and like <laughs> and then, uh, I hope that's not what you said I don't think it's actually what you sounded like to be clear um but it, like there must have been some point where you were like this is so fun like we need to make some kind of structure so that we can continue to incorporate this into our lives and like continue to find avenues for it to grow. Yeah, so I think when we started out in high school and we were all just kind of like a group of close friends, it was more fun and jokes then, but then um, a bunch of the guys did go off to uh, post-secondary education for music and I think that's kind of when people started taking it a little bit more seriously. Uh, That's when uh, we got to meet Raphael uh, at Humber and got him and uh, some other horn players at the time involved with us. So, uh, yeah, I think kind of growing up, getting out into the world and uh, meeting more musicians and getting um, immersed in that world of uh, music uh, really was when things took a turn. Yeah, I think recording is another big jump. So we we did put out a an, an album. Uh, we made m- hundreds of CDs in high school. It's back when you could still do that, and um and you know, we just kind of we set ourselves an arbitrary deadline. We finished recording it two days before, and it was just all home recording and, and whatever. And then when you get older, you kind of start because you play shows like you play a lot of shows. You're like that was awesome. You play a lot of shows. You're like I sucked at it, whatever. And it's very easy to balance that out over time. But recording, there's something a bit more permanent about that makes you want to like take some time like make sure you're really happy with your part Mm -hmm. make sure you're really happy with the song because you're kind of leaving it for posterity like even if only 20 people listen on spotify that's still 20 people right like (laughs) yeah so so and i so is another volunteer here but uh, she and i were talking about this the other day is like creating something that's earnest and like yeah i guess maybe there comes a point where like the fun part of it like is important but it becomes equally as important as making sure that you are expressing and representing yourself um in a way that you feel is authentic um and also exciting so yeah that makes sense um and also on the topic of being in music school um i've been uh, there are so there are a couple of students who volu- who volunteer here I mean, a couple music students who volunteer here um I feel like I, I always kind of like wind up back at this topic when I'm doing interviews, but I, I played piano. I've been playing piano for like 17 years. Um, I played cello for a time. I um, played in Carnegie Hall in high school and I do voice now and I study international development studies and I like literally haven't performed seriously since like probably my third year of high school. And I think that there's part of me that mm, maybe doesn't regret but feels like I'm missing out on the instruction and um, the experience that a lot of music students get. But 
I also get the sense from a lot of the bands who have come through here that maybe that's not entirely necessary. If you just pull yourself up by your bootstraps and practice for six hours a day after track, you too could be playing on community radio. Um, (laughs) I got a little bit lost there. What I'm trying to ask is how does your music education inform what you do now? And how necessary do you feel that it was? Or, I mean, that's obviously a hard question to answer because you can't know the outcome, right, if you didn't go. But I'm curious to hear your thoughts on that. Um, I, Daily the drummer, went to drum school for jazz. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I learned a lot about, like, improvisation and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I noticed something cool about it, uh, our, like, mix of musicians here is that, like, Emmett and Leon both went to school for, like, classical music. Mm -hmm. And Rafi went for jazz, too, but he went for trumpet. And he's kind of, like, a multi-instrumentalist. But, like, just that mix of, like, jazz and classical, like, sort of, like, philosophy. Yeah. It's kind of interesting. Like, there's, like, the composing side of it. But we also, like, leave room for, like, it's stuff to, like, what's the word for it, like? Jazz it up. Jazz it up. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Like change and like it doesn't, it's not always going to be the same. Yeah, I, c- I could add to that by saying that, uh, you know, music school, like any postgraduate um, school, uh, basically, you can get that knowledge anywhere. But truly what, what is really, really essential from going to school, I think, is the connections you make. And mm. that's what they tell you while you're there. And you don't really take that seriously until you look back. Uh, and right now, looking back, I would not be part of this band if I didn't go to school. And mm. uh, yeah, the people you meet, that's truly what makes a difference and uh, the connections and all that. And the friends you made along the way. Absolutely. Right? Great. Well, that's, I don't know, it's always uplifting to hear that like, yeah, maybe there's not like a specific pattern or like set of steps that you need to follow that you can still take part in something uh, by your own volition without having to like, I don't know, spend um, hundreds or tens of thousands of dollars on it. Sorry. Um, that was the American in me slipping out when I said hundreds of thousands of dollars on uh, on uh, <laughs> post-secondary education. <laughs> Here it's only tens of thousands. Anyways, um, let's go back to the curling tournament. So... <laughs> hard pivot. Hard pivot. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's, my, that's my style. I like to keep them on their toes. So um, curling tournament tomorrow, I guess if you, like, curl... <laughs> okay, you don't need to know anything about... No one in this band really knows anything about curling, to be honest with you. You're ruining the facade. <laughs> We're terrible at it. So, Boo Radley is the strongest curling team that Canada you. has ever thank seen. You. I mean, we came in last in our own tournament last year, but... What we were like, you've done this before. We've done this is the second annual. It was like a <laughs> true hit last year. So we were like, there's such a barrier to getting into curling, and then we're like, how can we bring this down and make it so like anyone can come, like and just hang out. It's a super fun day. You get to meet a bunch of people. There's a bunch of other bands playing, like curling, not actually playing music. But uh-huh. um, uh, so we did it last year, and it was a great day. And uh, yeah, it was. You don't need to know anything. We'll inst- like instruct whoever wants to come. There's no curling experience necessary. We and won't be doing the instructing. We're yeah, we're not doing curling. the instructing. There's like good curlers who do the instructing. And it's at the it's at the Alora Curling Club. Club. Yes. Alora, Alora curling, curling Club. Club. What time? Uh, if you um, go to the BooRadleyProject.com, you can sign up. It starts at 11 o'clock. The instruction. If you know nothing. 11 a.m. 11 a.m. I know. We're it's two okay. early mornings in a row here. This is wow. killing the band. The bar is open at 10:30 though. So. <laughs> <laughs> and the cardinal rule of curling is if you lose, uh, the winners buy drinks for you. We learned um, that last year. Okay. Yeah. But we, uh, we honestly tried. <laughs> 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 well, tomorrow at 11 a.m., please consider checking out the Laura Curling Club uh, and get your feet wet with some curling if you've never done it before. I know it's been on a lot of people's New Year's resolution lists, I'm sure, for far too long. Has it? Um, yeah. It, I'm, you know... I speak. I think I speak for many students here. At the, I'm, I can't keep this bit going. I don't really know. Um, <laughs> go, go curl. Go curl with the Boo Radley Project. It'll be so silly and fun. Um, that is at 11 a.m. tomorrow at the Alora Curling Club. I think the, that's probably the first time you've plugged a show at the Alora Curling Club. It <laughs> absolutely is. And you know what? I hope it's not the last. Um, the, the Boo Radley Project also has a couple other shows coming up with the Friendly Frogs on April 12th. 
um, in Toronto. It's at the Yeti. Is that correct? That's the the Kitchener show is at the Yeti. Whoops. The Toronto show is at the Cameron House. Okay, April twelfth at the the Cameron House. Yes. The okay, House. and then on the thirteenth in Kitchener at the Yeti, and then on the nineteenth in Peterborough, um, probably in like another curling club or like a field or something <laughs> under a bridge. Where? It's at Jethro's Bar oh, and Grill. Jethro's. We've okay. yet to see the grill. Okay, <laughs> just a bar. Um, great. And you you mentioned the Boo Radley Project. Dot, I almost said dot org. I'm pretty sure it's dot com. Dot edu. Dot, dot net. gov. Dot net. Um, <laughs> the Boo Radley Project. Dot com. Is that where people can find tickets, or where else can people uh, find information if need be? Yeah, people can find tickets at uh, BooRadleyProject.com. Is there no the? No the? There uh, is. Oh, yeah, there is. <laughs> okay, okay. This is important information. The BooRadleyProject.com for information on upcoming shows and also curling tournaments. Um, if we would like to find you on social media or Spotify or Bandcamp or, um, once again, under a bridge, what should we look up? Um, I think just the Boo Radley Project, um, you know, slash Instagram. Is that how it works? <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the website is just, we just pay for a domain to send people to a link tree. So the website has all this stuff. If you put that in, <laughs> we used to own a second domain called crustaceans.website, but it oh. got kind of expensive to renew. So <laughs> <laughs> is it because the name, it was because it was named crustaceans? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, Thank you so very much for being here and for chatting. It was such a treat. Uh, I'm looking forward to hearing the next couple songs. The Boo Radley Project uh, is going to play us out, so please enjoy. Hey, thanks to you for the interview. Thank you. Right, let's take me home I love your incandescent glow And I know your second smile will mark my way Cross the highway from the Jesus says All right It's not a sign Take me home I love your big old incandescent glow I 
Somebody, son, take me on. Get lost in my mind. Yeah, 
Awesome. Once again, that was the Boo Radley Project. Uh, catch them tomorrow at the uh, Laura Curling Club. <laughs> catch them yeah. in April uh, twelve on April twelfth in Toronto, uh, on the thirteenth in Kitchener, and on the nineteenth in Peterborough. You can also find them at theboo-radley-project.com and the Boo Radley Project on Spotify. Thank you for listening. Yeah. Thank you for having us. Thank you.